Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kes Moncrief and I'm an animal behaviour student and I've recently done an introduction to vertebrate biology. And today I'm going to be expanding on what was covered in that video and go over what makes a vertebrate a vertebrate. Now, when scientists look for unique vertebrate innovations, biologists are constantly looking for different ways in which they differ from their close relatives. Now, many of you may be thinking that that would be rather simple, but it isn't as easy as you would initially believe. Now, in many lineage lineages, some of the defining features may appear or they may disappear or be completely replaced by something else. So while you may believe that it is easy, as there are many things you need to consider, and that often involves looking very deeply into the evolutionary history of those particular vertebrates. Now, vertebrates are found within the superphylum um, Deuterostomus, apologies, Deuterostoma, and the phylum Chordata, Deuterostoma, completely apologize for the pronunciations, have a defining characteristic. That's the blastopore. Now, this is an opening at the bottom, which um, which forms the um, gastrula, which becomes the anus in later developments. Now, the Deuterostoma have had little changes since the introduction of molecular analysis and the superphylum still encompasses the um, ectodermata and two other groups of hemichordates where there are still some controversies in placing chordates inside the deuterostoma <coughs> and I'll be covering that in a later video and hopefully I'll be, now be able to pronounce it better in that video. Now, moving on to the phylum chordata, the closest invertebrate relatives are the urochordates. Now, these are such as um, the ascidian, as well as the cephalochordates, which um, includes the lancelet, which some of you may be aware of. Now, chordates vertebrates have several features, and now I could list these as a hollow dorsal, dorsal um, nerve cord, a post anal tail, a notochord, an endocile, which is a vertebrate thyroid gland homologue, and lastly, the pharynxial gill slits that are features um, also found in non chordate um, deuterostomes, and these actually form the inner ear canal as well as going through down to the um, pharynx. Now moving on to some key features that define vertebrates. Firstly the vertebrae which is probably the most common feature and something everyone be able to identify. Now to quickly cover a common misconception and that is the vertebral column or more commonly known as the backbone, is not always made of bone. In some classes, the vertebrae is made up of cartilage instead of bone. Now, the vertebrae surrounds and protects the main nervous cord, and even when formed of cartilage, it still performs its function. Now, you then have the second feature being the brain. Probably the most impressive trait of craniates is the brain encased in a skeletal neurocranium. Now, in all craniates, it is made up of an easily recognisable homologous parts. Now, these include the tele telecephalon, the diaphalon, um, the mesocephalon, and the rubencephalon. Now, in the development of the brain, it is very controlled from three points, referred to these as the three signaling centres, and they are usually found in vertebral embryos, which work almost like my lecturer used invisible scaffolding as a metaphor. And 
as they set up the foundations of how the brain develops. Now, brains aren't found in invertebrate chordates, but biologists have recently found that they are present in the more distantly relative acorn worms, um, a hemichordate. Um, the, this discovery has had many ramifications for our understanding of vertebrate genetics and its development. Now, moving on to the next feature, that is spinal nerves. Now, in craniates, nerves exit the spinal cord in each myoma of both sides of the innervate muscular connecting to the sensory cells. Now, the dorsal nerve, however, connects to the peripheral nerve on a spinal ganglion. Now, that is a whole lot of words but it should make quite a lot of sense. Now, the fourth feature is multi-layered epidermis. Now, while the mass majority of invertebrate taxa, with a few exceptions, possess an epidermis made up of only one single epi, um, epithelial cell layer, vertebrates um, epidermis consists of multiple layers and all vertebrates um, possess this multi-layered epidermis which have an intimate functional connection with a mesodermal dermis. Now, number five is a craniate type heart. Now this is interesting. In a plesiomorphic condition, it is located on the ventral side of an animal immediately be behind the syrinx. Now, also in a plesiomorphic form, it is muscular and consists of a distinct components such as the atrium, ventricle and a conus arterius. So now we move on to the supportive tissue. Now all vertebrates have cartilage in addition to bone. Some have cartilage in place of bone and all cartilage can be flexible like the cartilage in your nose and in your ear but it can also be quite firm such as the cartilage you find um, in your larynx now, your larynx being a voice box, and vertebrates, vertebrates possess two different variations of bones. They have endochondrial bone, which develops from cartilage and then calcifies, becoming firm. Examples of these being the vertebrae, the ribs, appendages, as well as your jaw. And these are all examples of endocranial bones. The second variation is dermal bones. These consist of bony structures like scales and plates which develop inside the skin. These act as a type of armour for some of the earliest jawless fi fish. Now, the vertebrate skull, however, is a much more complex structure which actually consists of both endocranial and dermal bone. So, it's a lot more complicated than many of our other bones in our body. There are other features which I will not be going into, such as a distinct mouth, endothelium lined blood vessels, and anterior sensory organs. Now, that is everything I'm going to be covering in today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, please leave a like and comment down below what you thought and tell me what you found most interesting about vertebrates. Also, comment any suggestions you have on other videos you wish for me to cover. And if you'd like to stay up to date with what I'm posting, please subscribe and stay notified about when I post. Ring that bell and I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye guys.